what is happening in Nigeria defies logic. People hold grievance for something that happened before they were born. Something that happened before the Nigerian Civil War or during the Nigerian Civil War. Something that was indoctrinated in them, not that it happened to them directly. But they refuse to hold grievance against politicians who enact all sorts of failed policies, experimental trial and error policies that inflict serious hardship on them. Yes, these are the ones that affect them directly. So why don't they hold grievance against such policies, against the people who enact them on them? You will see some Nigerians that supported many administrations in different states in Nigeria. Many of them have been rendered homeless because the government demolished their homes. Homes they spent all their savings, their entire life savings, all gone within a second. But don't be surprised that these same people will turn around, they wouldn't hold any grievance against anyone, they will turn around and support the same people that destroyed their lives, simply because they were given small change. There are many examples of this attitude by Nigerians. That's why many people have given up, saying that there is no need fighting for people who love their chains. How can you defend your oppressor? It doesn't make any sense. How can someone steal 10 million naira from you and give you 1 million naira in return and you start singing the person's praises? All the countries Nigerians admire, all the western countries that Nigerians emigrate to. In fact, if Nigerians could swap places with them, many Nigerians would jump at the offer and move to these countries. These countries didn't get all their rights and development on a platter. They fought for every inch of it. Throughout the hundreds of years their democracy have existed, they fought for it and continue fighting every day to make sure that their rights are not eroded. How do they hold their government to account? By holding grievances. Yes, there is something a party or someone in power will do in their country, that party will never get elected for many decades. Compare that to what happens in Nigeria, Nigerians don't hold grievances. Today, many people are shouting and lamenting that the hardship is so much on them that they can't even feed, there is too much suffering. But the same people will turn around during an election and accept spaghetti, a kilo of rice, chicken change, 1,000, 2,000 that wouldn't even last for two hours, and still vote the same people that impoverished them yesterday. How do you hope that your country will develop when you reward failure? Let's even assume that the politicians and the government don't know what they're doing, but it's still the job of the people to correct the course of a politician or the government when they go astray. You don't reward them. If you reward them, they will say, hey, what we are doing is not even bad. Let's continue with it since the people still accept us. But that's not the reality. They do it intentionally. They impoverish you because they know they will have to come and buy the vote from you. The day Nigerians will stop selling their votes and accepting gifts to vote for a politician, that day Nigeria will change because politicians will learn that they must change the lives of their citizens, that they must build infrastructure to support education and other things that will boost the economy in order to be voted again in the next election. It's just like allowing a thief to get away with a crime. Even after catching the person, you are aware that he stole something. He is in possession of what he stole, but you refuse to punish him. You are not teaching him a lesson. He will go on tomorrow and become a bigger thief. That's how life works. Actions have consequences. Now, let's hear the story of one man, a northerner, who used to spread hate online. You see, in most cases, because of the indoctrination and grievances Nigerians hold for each other, they spread the hate at the benefit of politicians who benefit because of the division between us. Mind you, this is not limited to any tribe in Nigeria. There are bad eggs in every tribe. That's why people should stop the generalization. Whenever the presidential election of 2023 is being talked about, many people seem to single out Yoruba people. No, Yorubas are progressives. Many of them suffered horribly because they decided to vote for Pito Obi and campaign for him in their homeland. Many of their brothers wondered why are they campaigning against their own person. So people must stop the generalization. There are many people who voted massively against this man, especially in Lagos. Look at all the local government areas that Labour Party won, especially the most populated local government in Nigeria, Alimosho local government area. 
No one can say that Yorubans are not in majority in that local government area. But Labour Party won there. There are many examples of this, so people should stop the generalization. There are few people who do all this. Some of them do it for a fee. They earn a living doing it. Some are so indoctrinated that they do it for free for politicians. Yes. Now, let's hear this man's thoughts on why he changed his mind about P2B. Like you all know, P2B is a dollar millionaire. He can afford to move with his family to any country of his choice in the world and enjoy his life till the end. But he's still here, fighting for the masses, opposing the government to make sure that they do the right thing so that Nigerian lives will change. So that Nigerians will stop living in abject poverty despite having so much wealth. Let's take a listen. You know, I'm the only one that have seen what I have seen. These people, when I was doing something that was wrong based on their influence, they were all happy. Okay. Kagani, look at in the moon, look at in the inner saka window by the deba. Kua, do come to one day to put him in a saka or by the deba. I won the nicky by the dinner keeper. Ama, Saboda, Nagano Gaskia, Nagano Cancio, I or Daram, I key, uh, I knew the remo, the Muslim, Muslim ticket, Kuma, Anzoga, Shitalaka, and Zukua in a sham or hala, Rayua ties, Ada, Kumai. So, mutani sun gano gaskiya kuma shikenan sun zo su suna threatening dina i have to stop the account i have to take the account down or i should stop doing what i'm doing so ba mu abin da ya kara wannan abin da ya jawo suka yi wani din ne suspend aka suspend the account ya da akwai wani translation na mangano peter obi da nasa saka so wannan abun ya jawo many of them kept coming yeah, to yeah, my yeah, game yeah yeah ka ba mu a english so many of them kept coming to my DM asking me why will I be uh, spreading the words of uh, Peter Ob in in the language our people are understanding. They're like this is not this is this is something that will that will that will bring him so more massive supporters and people will understand he had good intention for not. So they say ah uh, like this is this is politics you people people elected you based on ethnic and religious lines and you have felt you have felt so now that people are realizing their mistake why are you just attacking people saying they should stop like i just didn't understand so i never knew they had a plan of uh, of, 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 of of coordinating and reporting my account to be suspended me is only me i see what i've seen oh. these people they are well prepared they don't want they don't want because they cannot they can no longer hold the uh stand the truth coming out because they see people are, are understanding all the wrong information and misinformation they kept spreading so and today i open almost three accounts so out of them i've been suspended i just don't understand why like I will not back down. If 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 this Twitter will not do, I would I will change platform. I will go somewhere. This message, the wrong thing that I have done, I must clean it. I have I was used, so I will have to clean this. This is this is on me. I have done things that is wrong, and this is the time we do the right thing. The right thing is to tell our people truth. We can't continue this way. We can't continue seeing our people collecting supergative and voting for a candidate. We can't if the, if anybody should vote, then it should be based on competence what someone has. But our people went and voted for someone who had no plan for, for northern Nigeria, which is very sad. No plan. If you ask, let him come now and tell us what he didn't say he had any plan now for northern Nigeria. I wish to be live in a sweet energy. Today I've come home to Kano. All I want to do is dance. It was all because he is Muslim. We should vote we should vote for him because he is Muslim, which is very wrong. 
and i'm glad we are now understanding what we did was very wrong and i think it is not late that we uh correct the mistake we have done but this is just the lesson that everybody is getting coins we are looking to receive our new one so that's it bad governance doesn't discriminate it is just like a stray bullet it can hit you whether you whether you are part of it you are you have contributed to the bad of governance by collecting spaghetti and voting for a certain candidate or not so i'm just glad that i realized what i did was very wrong and nobody can now stop me that god has put the lights in my eyes to see the right thing nobody can stop me no matter how they kept reaching out that i should stop and i will not stop if this platform will not do will change to another platform will go facebook instagram or whatsoever will change to someone right but but will not be intimidated